You know, folks, some days we just wake up and, uh, you know, it feels like it's a harder day to record the podcasts. <laughs> I feel like almost every time we wake up, it's gotten a little harder. And Usually we're excited, but yes. it's okay. And today, you know, I wished I didn't have to do it because we were, the, you know, it's just days are days are short, you know, <laughs> it's raining. Yeah, you have to I'm sitting but over here like I'm, 30 weeks pregnant. Right? <laughs> I got to pull the that card. sitting is hard. <laughs> Okay, fine. Okay, I will never suffer as much as you've suffered. <laughs> I win all the time. You win. No, but I'm so glad that we did because today we're talking about one of our favorite yes. topics in the parenting side, and it's family worship. So today we're going to discuss how do you do family worship, what is it, and how can you start it today at home? So we'll cover that on the other side. It's so interesting to me when you said family worship at home. I was like, isn't that where you do family worship? But you do worship as a family at church. Well, well, maybe we believe that you, we should. Uh, and we just had that conversation actually on the fierce marriage side of things. Yeah. But uh, we'll talk well, about that. The reason why I say at home is because we've done some preliminary kind of straw polls with our audience. Yeah. And what's your experience with family worship? And people write in, they're like, oh, it's great. We go to our church and everybody sings together and we love it. Yeah. And, and I'm like, that's... I get what you mean, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> what I mean is really the technical term for it is private worship. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit. Uh, but here's a quote. This is from How Howard Hendricks. says this, Many Christians are praying for revival in the church, but there will never be revival in the church unless there is revival in the home. Mm, it's okay. And I would add there will never be revival in our country unless there is revival at home. And of course, via the church <laughs> is how the revival goes. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to talk about that. How do we spark revival in our own homes, namely through this idea of family worship? But first, if you're new to this space or to the podcast, my name is Ryan. This is my lovely wife, Selena. She's the star of the show. I exist to draw the greatness out of her <laughs> so that you can enjoy what I get to enjoy on a daily basis. <laughs> Just the heart and the mind of this wonderful woman yes. who, yes, is pregnant with our fourth child. Yeah. Uh, and we're in the last, we are, <laughs> jointly. <laughs> In the last it's trimester. True. He is. He does have to kind of <laughs> help help this mama out sometimes. Although Selena was up uh, cleaning up puke last night um, and I slept all the way through it. The puke of a child. <laughs> I'm Somebody sorry. got sick. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying like you work pretty hard and it's hard to, it's hard to contend. With, <laughs> so you just don't try. Greatness. Yeah. I just, you know, I sleep through it. <laughs> just, yeah, I'm not going to. There's no. There's She's no, got it. It's fine. Yeah. Anyways. Um, nothing no, is, yeah, go yeah, ahead. nothing. I think we both would yeah. agree with to this very loudly, but nothing has really changed the dynamic and the culture of our family as family worship has. Nothing else has had that much influence, that much impact, that much, that much lasting Amen. change, yeah. uh, like worshiping together as a family at home under scripture, yeah. singing, being so, led. Someone wrote in, and this is a response to a question, and I'm guessing if someone asked it, there's going to be more people that actually wanted to ask it or asked it, we yeah. didn't see it. But they said, what is, explain to us how you do family worship. I think in concept, many people know. We're going to describe what it is here regardless. But many people want to know, how do you actually pull it off? Mm -hmm. And what does it look like? What tools do you use? So today, we're going to define family worship. We're going to give you a really clear definition. We're going to tell you what it entails. Uh, then we're going to get into how we as the Fredericks do it, based on what it entails just to model it yeah, um, and just an to example. model it and give you some kind of examples, including some, some supplements. And then we're going to leave you with um, some ideas to get started and some very tangible resources. So it's going to be a power packed episode. Let's dive right into what is family worship um, in principle. Family worship is this. It's a means of fulfilling the command um, that we see in Deuteronomy six. So mm -hmm. let's read from Deuteronomy six. Um, Starting in verse 4 all the way through uh, verse 9. Selena, why don't you read that for us? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So... This verse is talking about saturating your child's life yeah. in the law of God and how he sees things, how he wants you to see things, how he's commanded us to obey him. Now, we're zeroing in really on this. I think it's starting in verse maybe six. You shall teach them diligently these commands to your children and talk of them when you sit in your house. Talk of them when you sit in your house. Mm -hmm. What does he mean by that? Is it just something that we just 
we don't we often gloss over that but when we sit in our house how do we teach these to our children yeah. in those moments and what is the prime one of the primary ways we sit is we sit to eat or we sit to yes. read but i think eating is probably one of the biggest ways that yeah. we're still drawn together as families and then when you walk by the way now we don't walk as much as the israelites walked but you certainly drive <laughs> so there's a there's a means to, to teach them in those ways but yeah. i think specifically when you're sitting in your house that's when family worship unfolds yeah. comes into full bloom so Family worship is a fulfillment of this command. And here's a definition because I think we like definitions and they're good. Um, <laughs> is this family worship is a sustained practice of worshiping God as a household within the home through Bible study, singing, and prayer. Mm-hmm. And so each one of those has an important um, emphasis. So disciplined, it's a sustained, disciplined practice of worshiping God. What I mean by that is it must be a special, set aside, directed, and consistent time. Uh, rhythm in your life yeah sustained discipline Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise you're just kind of if you're not actively engaging in family worship you but maybe once in a while you'll you'll read a scripture or you'll you'll pray together or whatever that's fine and good and those things should still happen but family worship is a very specific set aside time that has a unique role in the life Mm -hmm. of a family it's consistent yes um okay so that's the discipline sustained practice of worshiping god so what do we mean by worshiping god this might go without saying, but it's not just talking about God. So sometimes you'll say, someone will say, yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian. I totally believe in God. I totally believe in God. Well, but do you worship God? Do you adore him? Do you admire him? Do you study what he says? Do you yeah. obey him? Yeah. So by worship, and worshiping God it means that we don't just talk about him. We don't just think about him. Even we don't just study him alone. Those are obviously good things. We worship him expressly as an act of admiration and obedience mm. in the home. Right, right. In the home. Okay, and that's the next part. So as a household within the home. So again, we mentioned at the beginning, but it's distinct. Okay, It's not corporate worship or public worship, which happens in the church. And it's not secret worship, which happens between just you and God and your own devotional study and your own devotional time. Mm. Um, this is private worship or it's family worship. It's distinct from those two. Each have their place and there are some... Mm-hmm. Place it, this ways they'll cross over, but they they are distinct. Yeah. And within the home, that's why. Uh, again, I'm just saying that distinction because it's not having a family worship service at church where right. where the kids are still in the service. Uh, this is different. And then final, the final thing is uh, through so through the activities of Bible Bible study, singing, and prayer. Um, and so we're going to get to those uh, activities below. But God has commanded that He be known and worshipped in certain ways. Mm-hmm. He's given us His Word. His inscripture word, his incarnate word. He said, worship me in, in these specific ways, in spirit and in truth, uh, confess sin, things like that. Right. Um, and so we are worshiping God on his terms. Yeah. Um, and that's, we don't get to decide what to do for family worship. Yeah, I mean, there, I think I think there are some supplemental, these are the primary things that it should entail, right? Scripture reading, worship, and prayer. Uh, if your kids are sitting and attentive and want more, yeah well i mean you know for us like the holidays we'll read an advent book for christmas or Mm -hmm. we'll pull out something for easter and we'll we'll do that in addition to Uh, however the primary the scriptures remain the same those are primary worshiping god is primary uh engaging in prayer uh is all primary and consistent so uh, i don't think we're big fans of supplemental resources we create them we have have like 10 of those to give to you by the way and so Um, but again not there's an order to things Yep. Okay. So that's what family worship is. Now, what does family worship actually entail? And we've given you the big points, but let's talk about each one. Right. So the first one, uh, reading scripture. So the the big key here is that we're reading scripture to understand what God is saying and then respond to what he has said. Right. We're not interpreting scripture on our own uh, without... (laughs) <laughs> I guess any check or balances here, right? We one are... of my pet peeves is when someone reads a scripture and they say, what does that passage mean to you? <laughs> well, that's very popular in yes. most like, yes. Christian small group settings. And I don't think anyone, people do that unwittingly. What they're trying to say is, how are you reflecting on that? Yes. But it doesn't mean something to me. It means what it means. And I need to understand what it means. Right. And I submit myself to right. uh, the authority of what it means. So let's talk about what, what it means. But like, it doesn't mean something else for someone else. And you don't have to be a biblical um, scholar, I think, yeah. to understand the Bible. Uh, one thing for us that I think has helped us understand it just generally is doing a reading plan every year and going 
in bulk through the scriptures, understanding the character mm-hmm. of God uh, and how he communicates and loves his people. As adults, we do that. As adults, we do that. But I think that pours into how yeah. we lead, how you lead our family. Uh, and also, again, if, you, if you're if you sitting here thinking, well, I don't really know the Bible very well. I know it, but I don't. How can I teach it to my kids? Well, start in the Gospels, right? Start in the, in the, the stories of Jesus, the mm-hmm. life of Jesus. Just start there and let the scriptures just do what they do. And we have some good tools that will help you in the in yeah, the pursuit can of mining out that meaning you yeah, don't because it does take some skill yeah. um now scriptures are plain and i think but we can dig deeper to get more of that gold out of there and so we're gonna give you some really tangible tools um to put that to work yeah. uh so that's reading scripture um i'll add this caveat don't just read scripture or like a pair if you have young kids maybe the temptation is to read a paraphrase or a kid's bible and say hey this is at their level um I think there's a time and a place for kids' Bibles and for paraphrases. We love uh, the one by Catherine Voss. It's incredible. Um, but it's never going to be a replacement for the full scripture. Right, and supplemental. So we, we read the full text to them in all of During its family. gritty beauty. During family worship. During family worship. Yep. And, uh, you know, I don't always ex- expand on everything. Like going through Genesis 19 was very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> using words that we'll, we don't want our kids to know yet. We'll that they, they're up, not yeah. mature enough to handle. And so we just say... We'll explain that to you at another time, um, but but read the full scripture from a good translation. I'm a big fan of uh, the NASB. We're reading the the CSV and the ESV right now. CSB, King, CSB, yeah, and the King James is fine. Yeah, it's um, great. It's good. Uh, okay, so that's reading scripture. The second one, singing. Yeah. Yes, singing. Okay, and this is where I get a lot of dads that kind of they kind of wince and cringe. <laughs> They're like, I can't sing. And so to them, I say this, Psalm 96, verses 1 through 2. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth, including dads who can't sing. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. It's not about blessing your own name. It's not about making making yourself sound good. It's about blessing him. (laughs) Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to what? To day. Yes. I want to say something. I think that kids see more than they hear. So when they see their dad singing, mm, they just want to so they just want to sing like dad and they want to worship how mom and dad are worshiping. They don't care how you sound not until mm-hmm. they're like 15, right? But anyways, even then, they are it can almost be kind of a, a silly joke, but if dad's singing with full gusto and he's loving and worshiping the Lord, like that's going to speak louder than your actual voice. So give yeah. it give it your all dad's go for it. Yeah, um, and trust me, it does get easier. Um, there, by the way, if you need more convincing on the whole, everyone should sing new songs to God and, yeah. and lift up your voices in praise. There's dozens and dozens of verses. Just look up songs about singing in Scripture. Google that. And you'll be you won't be surprised because mm-hmm. there's a ton of them. Um, common questions we get when it comes to singing is, "Can I worship without singing?" I'm going to say. Uh, not in this case. <laughs> I'm going to say. <laughs> not in terms of family worship. Of course, Everybody we worship God with our lives. We worship God through what we do, through our work, through our internal kind of internalizing of all he is and, yeah. done, and all he's done and who he is. But in this case, like we must make a joyful noise mm-hmm. to God. And even if you can't sing, I, I sat um, behind somebody. We had a men's breakfast last weekend. I sat next to somebody. He's an army guy. And it's funny how army guys have a hard time. <laughs> All the army guys I know can't <laughs> sing. <laughs> and but he was singing like loud. So good. And and he wasn't over he wasn't, you know, belting full gusto? It, it. It was full gusto, but it wasn't like he was doing anything other than just delivering the song so good. unto God. I loved it. Um and he's a faithful brother. So press into that awkwardness, just own it. It's okay. If you're not musical, here's a pro tip. Just put on a song and put it on loud. <laughs> So that's okay. And sing to it. And sing with it. Yes. yes. And sing alongside it. Find a song that your family knows. Put that thing in the Bluetooth speaker and yep. let it rip. Yep. And just sing with all you got. Yep. Um, and, and then as you get more comfortable, maybe experiment with more of the acapella stuff. Right. Okay. So that's reading scripture, singing, worship, and song. prayer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So prayer, uh, we talked about this a lot, but prayer primarily is a response to what God's already said. And so when we pray... We are aligning our hearts with what God has said, and we are, in many, in many ways, even praying Scripture back. Yeah. But it's it's that actual communion piece with God. Um, and we pray as Jesus prayed. Yeah. In Matthew, he taught, he taught us the, the Lord's Prayer. 
So we pray even in form and even uh, with content. Yeah. And I think that as a family, there's a couple of different ways you can work this out. We have kind of a chalkboard near us, near our table, where we write down some specific things we want, or people, um, circumstances that we want to kind of keep at the front of our minds. Uh, we also have, uh, we do this in our home school room, but we have a kind of family prayer journal. Uh, so we watch world watch every day which is kind of the news in 10 minutes a christian thing and then we write down some things that we should pray for or praises and see how the hand of god is at work and so again there's just little ways that you might be able to work this out depending on the ages and stages of your children you really can build out something like just a family prayer journal of having just a notebook of writing something down um, and sharing that you know i imagine if your kids are older maybe they just want to write something down and they may not want to share but they want mom and dad to know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm not an expert yet with the teen years at all. Okay, so you're actually segueing right now. And, and there's also some supplemental things that we can do. We're going to share that with our own kind of methods for family worship, okay? So we've given you the definition. We've given you what are the bones of family worship. And there's also, the, in addition to the three, there's extra things you can do. I like segues. As you, as you, <laughs> and so how do the Fredericks do it? How do the Fredericks do family worship? How do we fail at it too? And Here's the, the, probably, yes. And this is probably not the perfect. most... Um, yeah, this 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 is what this most correctly answers the question that was asked because yes. they wanted to know how do you guys actually right. pull and, it off? And we've grown into this, so if it does sound overwhelming, uh, we didn't start this way, right? We had little little kids. We still have some little kids, uh, and another one on the way. But it, we we grow. You grow into these things. So start simple. Start with you know scripture. Just, we'll get into that. Okay. Down below, but what, how do we do it? So we do all of. So we start with scripture. Right now we're reading through Mark. Yeah. We were in the Old Testament. Uh, we were getting into. Gosh, we were into Judges. Like, <laughs> yes. We made it pretty far. Yeah. Uh, we didn't actually we skipped some in there. I think we skipped Leviticus. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll read the full council of Leviticus at a later date. <laughs> um, but then we so I, and I thought we need to we need some gospel in here. Yeah. And so we started reading Mark because Mark is the shortest kind of punchiest um, gospel. I think next we might do a letter, an epistle. Yeah. We taught them what epistles were this morning. They're younger kids, so we have to teach them some of those foundational things. If you have older kids, you can talk about the more conceptual things. Usually with yeah. young kids, you do a narrative. So we're in Mark, um, and some days I'll do a psalm if if I'm feeling like we just need to kind of marinate in a psalm. The wisdom of God, yes. Um, and then we will sing a hymn. So Selena is really good about, uh, you have a, a weekly hymn or a monthly hymn that yeah. we're learning with the girls. So that's in our family hymnal. It's just this little... Yeah. It's like a little thing with clear pockets in it, right? Yes. I think it's like an art display folder thing. And so we just make copies of the hymns that we're learning and then everybody can kind of read them. Yeah. It's a great we, way to teach kids to read, by the way, too. And we <laughs> hand those to all the kids. Uh, well, the two older ones and the younger one shares with either me or you. Yeah. And we sing a cappella almost every morning. Um, and we sing the whole hymn. Yeah. It doesn't take long, like five minutes maybe yeah. to sing it. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll pray. And uh, we'll pray over it through the chalkboard list that you've laid out. Um, but we also do pepper in the supplemental things. Yeah. And so sometimes we'll, we'll at the beginning of family work, before I'll get into w- the word. Yeah, sometimes just gathering them, getting their attention, we'll do a catechism, yeah? Yeah, we, right now we're working through the New City Catechism, which if, you, if you've not heard of it, it's just basically a, it's the Westminster Shorter Catechism, even condensed even more. Right. But the core truths are there, um, and there's actually songs that you can There's play an app, for young kids yep, and songs for the kids to learn the shorter versions um and they've been wonderful yeah it's great the kids love the music so just kind of reining them in so doing a catechism or a bible bible memory cards which will share you with you the cards that we actually created um and it's a through z and they're currently on p yeah um and we'll probably review sometimes we'll review a few cards from the previous mm-hmm. days and weeks and then i'll ask them to uh recite the verse for that current week I keep the card right in my Bible, so it yeah. reminds me to go through it. Yeah. So we supplement with that. Um, this one is going to sound, I don't know, it's going to sound hoity-toity, but we, we are doing some basic Greek, with, biblical Greek with our kids, memorizing John 1 yeah. in the Greek. And as we're memorizing it, I'm explaining to them, you know, what is what is there in the right. Greek we don't see in the English. Well, and it's good because it's the background, uh, just background, he just finished up Greek 3, I think, in seminary. So it's pretty fresh with him and so him being able to share what he's learning you know yeah i think is really helpful. so that's a function of our classical we classically educate latin in the very early stages and i'm hoping to piggyback with greek mm-hmm. and if not i'm trying to usurp the latin with the greek <laughs> that's my <laughs> secret goal um and so that's unique you don't have to do that obviously but um if you do have any sort of knowledge like that or you have desire to do yeah. it um i think that's really helpful um 
other additions that we do, sometimes we'll sing the doxology at the end. Yeah. So we'll sing a hymn, we'll pray, and then we'll do the doxology because we just mm-hmm. want our kids to understand like this is a beautiful thing to remind our hearts of. Um, with the hymn, Selena will sometimes teach church history. We have this, we're going to share the resource with you, with you, but we have a book that has this one page, like yeah. kind of history of that hymn. It's an oldie, but a goodie. It's an awesome book. Yeah. And then at times, um, if I can remember it, <laughs> for some reason I learned the Aaronic blessing wrong, yeah. but I'll bless my family as, as they go about, because usually after family worship, we break, I go to work in the office and the kids basically go get ready for school. And then we clean up the, the breakfast table. Um, uh, and so the ironic blessing is just this, is the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, if you grew up in a church that said that every Sunday, you're blessed. I did not grow up in a church that yeah. said that every Sunday. So I say that over my family. Um, the blessings are, are ours in Christ. It's just a reminder of those blessings. Mm-hmm. I'm not actuating the blessing. It's just, it's already there. I'm reminding them the Lord is blessing you and keeping you. Um, and then uh, coming soon. So this is what I hope to do. Again, growing into things yeah. as kids, you know, get comfortable in the habits, get comfortable in knowing what to anticipate and how to part and how to participate that everyone participates. Uh, and this is not without wrangling and this is not without even some like kinetic sand on the table so that the three-year-old can sit yeah. and listen and pay attention um, or at least hear, right? And that's times. okay. That's okay. Um, and you have to just kind of power through it. This is this is what discipleship yep. is, I feel like, and um, this is what worship is. No, you don't want to power through it in the sense that you're doing it alone and no one's paying <laughs> right. attention. Absolutely. You have to be vigilant and call them into it. Right. Um, but coming soon, I want to uh, have our kids memorize some of the core creeds of the Christian faith, the Apostles Creed, maybe even, maybe even the Nicene Creed and things like that, uh, but also confessions. So understanding, I mean, the catechism is part of the, the Westminster Confession, right, right. Um, but even just going deeper into the confessions of their faith. I wish I had those things deeply rooted in my in my heart. I don't, so I'm going to use my children as a, as a vehicle. To get them <laughs> rooted in well, and I just want to say a word of encouragement too. Uh, if it feels overwhelming and like a dutiful thing, it might feel like that at first. But again, as we've grown into it, the, our mm. love and appreciation, and again, the th- the changes that we've seen in our family because of this, they keep drawing, it. Keep, it's like God just continuing to call you in and continuing yeah, to draw you in uh, to know him, to know about his promises, to know his character in, in history, uh, yeah. and to know um, how we're supposed to worship and why we worship that way and what it, what are these promises like it, it's just like jumping in the ocean and you're just learning you, the more the deeper you go the more you want to know and so the um this morning was a perfect example of that yeah. because we were we skipped breakfast i think this morning or i, I did basically it was fast because everybody's going every which way it was, it was a later morning and i was getting ready to go off to work and i thought you know no i I, we need to do family worship. It's important. Yeah, it was one of those like everybody's kind of coming to the table at weird times, and we just were like tired. And, yeah. But then you stopped and you said, "Nope, we need to do this." It's important, and it was we leading it, the family. It was dutiful, but you know what? We got into the word, and immediately it was yeah. like the duty sloughed away. Yeah. And I think the enemy can use that sense of duty to kind of give us an excuse to say, "I'm not a legalist. So I'm right. not going to. I don't have to do it." Um, but if it's important, like we make it happen. Yeah. And it's not too earn our salvation it's because god is that good yeah. to um, serve him with diligence yeah. and here's another big disclaimer <laughs> all of this sounds like a lot i'm telling you it takes shockingly low amounts of time 15 maybe, maybe 20 15 minutes, minutes. <laughs> yeah maybe 20 minutes depending on how much wrangling and you have to do in do the, between if we just do the the minimum which is we read don't even read a chapter of scripture sometimes we read like a just a section of scripture yeah we'll sing a shorter sh- song when we pray we're talking under five minutes and but it but we have that spot earmarked. Yeah. Sometimes we spend way more time. Sometimes we spend just yeah. a few minutes. The point is, is that don't be discouraged by everything we're describing right. because it, you grow into it. And we're going to talk yeah. to you about how to, how to grow and into it now. Cons- just be consistent, I think, is the biggest thing. Yeah, exactly. Be consistent. So how can you get started and with the goal <laughs> of consistency? Okay, yeah. so as parents, like if if I'm gung-ho about family worship, but Selena is gritting her teeth the whole time, or you you want to do it, but I refuse to lead, that's going to be really hard right. to make that consistent because yeah. the inertia of your disagreement will always bog you down. Yeah. So as parents find agreement mm-hmm. around it, in other words, is it important? Yeah. Do you both agree that it's important? Right. Um, is that, it oh, doable? Yeah. Can you do it? And we're here to, we'll tell yes, you. Yes, you can. You can. <laughs> yeah. Um, so find agreement uh, and realize that it's doable and talk about it and decide. Yeah. And then I'll say this as 
as the husband, as the father, men, um, lead. Uh, it's if you lead, your family will follow. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. If you initiate, your family will follow, and they will follow uh, with the enthusiasm that you bring to the table. They will follow gladly. I am always amazed at how our kids just rise to the occasion. He says jump, and they say how high and how many times, and they're <laughs> it, it is so beautiful how how we have um, sweet daughters kids that engage. Helps. But, you know, your kids are being discipled by you. It's just what are you discipling them in? Yeah. If you're a football fan, a golf fan, if you're, I'm talking to the men or the women, but mostly the men here, your kids are going to want to participate in whatever they see has your heart. Yeah. So I guess this is maybe a barometer of just God have your heart. And are mm-hmm. you enthusiastically approaching his word, approaching his throne yeah. and leading your family the way he's He's given us? Um, so that's it. Find, find agreement. Men lead. Um, find a daily rhythm that is repeatable and sustainable right it's not sustainable to get all your kids up at 5 a.m because you got to be out the door by 5 30 that might work for a few days but that will wear you down over time instead find a time that you're going to be regularly together as a family Mm -hmm. usually it's going to be breakfast or dinner Mm -hmm. and just make that the time that you do family worship when we eat we worship that's it right for us it's breakfast sometimes we'll do sometimes we'll do dinner yeah if breakfast is crazy or we have to be out the door for something but right anyways right um, and this is what you're getting at as far as getting started. So if you found a st- sustainable rhythm, start with five minutes and keep it very simple. Yeah. Do And here's a pro tip. Start with five minutes per day. Do that for a week. Mm-hmm. And then once you've done that for a week, mm-hmm. add a minute. Yeah. And we're not going for time frames here, <laughs> but I'm just saying if, if time frames help, just five minutes, then add a minute, do six minutes for a week, then do seven minutes yeah. for a week. So finally, you're just doing it kind of... Again, it'll just multiply and yeah. you will just be so filled with joy. Um, you might be a little demoralized at first depending on the age of your children, but guess what? That is what you're doing. You are leading and teaching and modeling and showing and discipling your kids. That is what it looks like. Amen. That's good. And don't be afraid to make mistakes, adapt, and just like... T- it's all right. Don't take yourself too seriously. It's, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you don't... and. If you're wondering about the word piece, like if, we, if you want to take one part seriously, it's just make sure that we're interpreting the word correctly. Yeah. And so I think the clearest resource we have for you, and this is the final part that we'll discuss today. Um, there's two books that I can recommend. I've read a lot Thanks, on family Jack. worship because I'm working on a family worship book right now. But these two, okay. One is called Thoughts. Let's see. Okay. Family Worship Bible Guide, right? This one is um, can be your by the Reformation person. Heritage Books. All right. Mm. And what that is, is you'll read a scripture in the Bible and then you'll go to this and it has a a page or two on that scripture. Mm. And so it really helps you exegete um, in a way that's really trustworthy. Mm. And what's cool is as you read, you'll learn, but you also learn how to interpret scripture for yourself. And there is a little intro to family worship itself in that book. Another one on similar lines and actually is a little bit more involved. If you want something maybe a step further, it's called uh, the family worship book. Um, And this is by... Um, who's that by T. L. Johnson. T. Terry L. Johnson. That's a good one. Um, this one right here, family worship by Jerry Marcelino. Um, it's like an oldie, but a goodie. it's an oldie, but a goodie. This guy's been writing on this for years. I've read a lot of these. I've read all these actually. This one's family worship by Donald Whitney. This is the first one I ever r- read. Um, it's what made me want to do family worship in our household. It was yeah. this book by Donald Whitney. This one is the oldest one. It's by James W. Alexander. And this is like, um, I think it was written maybe in the 1800s. Um, but anyway, brilliant. It's called Thoughts on Family Worship. Mm. Amazing. Read that. Another one by Joel R. Beakey. Okay, this is called Simply Family Worship. Really creative names, by the way. <laughs> um, Joel R. Joel Beakey. Uh, this one's good. It's not for the. It's not for snowflakes. Because <laughs> <his, laughs> he, 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 sh- he shoots you straight. And if you don't have thick skin, you might be offended. But it's all truth. <laughs> it's good. Joel, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a faithful minister of Christ. Okay, this one. The New City Catechism is one that we mentioned. Um, that is available uh, it's just as a book, but then once you get the book, you get the app for free that has the songs and some pretty cool animations that go with the, the app as you're going through it. Um, another book by Carl Truman. It's called The Creedal Imperative. Um, so this one is, is it's basically, it's making the case for why creeds and confessions should still be a part of the Christian's mm. life. And what basically he's saying is that you are confessing something. Right. Everyone has a creed and a confession. The question is, what is your creed? What is your confession? And this basically, his case is that this ensures that your creed and your confession is in in fact biblical and Christ honoring. He's a Westminster guy. Yeah. And the final one is, it's got Selena's bookmark in it, but it's uh, Then Sings My Soul. 
Um, yep, yeah. by Robert Morgan. Yeah. This one is the the oldie but the goodie, but it uh, probably is blurred. Uh, this is the one that we were talking about when it, it comes to hymns. So it gives you, if you look inside this, I don't know if I can show this very well. Um, but on one side you have the hymn, and on the other side you kind of have a historical narrative. Um, there's a few facts of when it was written, who it was written by, kind of circumstances around it. It has uh, in the back the order of the hymns in alphabetical mm-hmm. order. And it's been so illuminating for us uh, to when you sing these hymns, sometimes remembering the heavy stories that were behind them and why they were written uh, and why they used kind of the words and the vocabulary yeah. that they did and how powerful that can be uh, for our own hearts. Really good. I love that book. Okay, final resource we have for you. You mentioned the A to Z flashcards that we created. Um, so we've had this project simmering, I'll say, <laughs> yeah. for the last five years. And the project is called Theology Kids. This is our first product. And this was not meant to be a plug. I asked Lance, should I, should I mention these? Because we're not really ready to sell more than that. But we created these, these flashcards. Here's what the cover looks like. Um, it just says, uh, Theology Kids, A to Z Animals, Bible Memory Cards. And yeah. each card, I'll just use K here. It, it's it got an animal on one side with a verse that starts with the letter in question. Yeah. And then it's got, uh, just on the other side, it's the K. And basically, we've gamified this. So if the girls memorize all 26, yeah. there's one verse for each letter. Yeah. If they memorize them and they pass the test, it's the <laughs> ominous memory test. Right. Then... Basically, I'm going to buy them a really fancy Lego set. That's what I told them. <laughs> so there's incentive, right, um, to hide God's word in your Yeah, heart. <laughs> and so if, if that's of interest to you, here's the logo. Oh, um, yeah, but here's... The Theology Kids thing. You can't see it if you're listening, but it's I love the logo that we came up with. Well, um, I like that, and it comes with getting the most out of these cards and how to kind of make the connection and um, where to keep cards and things like that. So I, I don't know. I, I We haven't advertised these anywhere. They've so never, these yeah. are, This is your... <laughs> First time. Well, and it'll probably uh, be the only time, frankly, but go to yes. theologykids.com and I'll make sure that there's a way to buy those yeah. there. I don't know how much they're going to be. We want we want to make them we wanna available to you. We want to equip parents, yeah. Um, our kids love them and they, yeah. they each have their own favorite animal and <laughs> the animal helps kind of with that mem- mem- remem- remembering yeah. the animal yep. associated with the verse. Um, so yeah, here's the encouragement for you. Okay. Fierce parent, fierce family. Truly and faithfully, obediently worship God as a family. If mm-hmm. you do, you'll be doing one of the most revolutionary, I mean that, the most revolutionary yeah. things possible. You'll be engaging in warfare of the truest and most relevant kind, and the kind that is both temporal and eternal, both present and future, both for today and forever. And that joy of family worship is yours right now. Mm-hmm. All you need to do is just step into it. And we hope this episode has encouraged you to that end. If you're hearing all this, you don't know who Jesus is, we want to invite you into a relationship with Christ. Um, you've watched this far, so you probably know. <laughs> but in case you don't, we have a website for you. It's thenewsisgood.com. Um, we invite you to go there to learn about what it means to put your faith in Christ and how to take steps forward in um, in your faith. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this gift of family worship. Um, thank you that we get to uh, enjoy your word together, to worship you together, regardless of how we sound. Um, we get to pray to a God who hears and I thank you for the, um, the instruction you've given us in your word to worship you in spirit and in truth and to do so in the home. I pray that you'd help us be parents who live this out with tenacity, who live this out with dedication, um, with clarity. I pray for the men, the, the husbands, the fathers. I pray that they would rise up and lead in their households. I pray for the mothers as well, that they would lead their children in this and they would, they would uh, support the family worship as it unfolds. And if their husband won't lead, Lord, I pray that you would help them to lead their families or their, their children in this. Uh, Lord, we love you. Thank you. We ask that you would bless the parents watching, listening to this. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, uh, fierce family, fierce parents, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we did this episode. I'm glad we didn't uh, yeah. phone it in today. <laughs> even though I wanted we don't to. Phone it in. <laughs> All right, so this episode of Fierce Parenting is uh, in the can. We'll see you again in seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce. <laughs>